Sweet. So, okay, so a couple times uh, ago, I told you guys that I printed what is, in essence, the Formula One rule book. Mm-hmm. Um, so the 2015 uh, sporting regulations and, uh, and the technical, technical regulations from the FIA. And I was just leafing through it um, yesterday or the day before one of these days. Um, and, and I have it no, by no means gotten into it. And I already found something that, that I thought was, was kind of crucial. Um, so I, I think it was two podcasts ago, I ended up with this big ti- di- diatribe about how <laughs> yeah, the, right. the, the, the F1 needs to be constructors championship and all that. Right. Um, and I don't know what I was thinking, but well, or what, I, what a constructor was, but a constructor is actually defined Ah, uh, in the book, there's, who, there's an actual, y- y- there's an actual definition. So, of there, it. so yeah. So, ah, who is okay. a constructor? And, and, and I think that I, this had me confused for a little bit. But a constructor is basically whoever, either a person or a company. Nowadays, mm-hmm. obviously, it's going to be a company, um, which designs the listed parts set out in Appendix Six of of um, of the sporting regulations. Um, so, these parts. That, that's another thing that's pretty interesting. So, so we have that. A constructor is the person or the company who designs uh, the monocoque, the survival cell, the front impact structure, the rollover structures, bodywork, wings, floor, and diffuser. Now... That seems like a lot of things. It, it, it seems like a lot of things, right. but... It's also not as as long a list as I thought. This, yeah, for example, the, 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 so the wiring loom, so the wiring of the cars, how, like how it works in there, that, that's so, you don't have to sign that. You can contract that out. Um, uh, so le, le, so let, me, let me go back. I, honestly, it's only like seven things. Monocoque, survival cell, front impact structure, rollover structures, body work, wings, floor, and diffuser. So that's mm-hmm. whoever builds those parts... Uh, or des- no, actually, he doesn't even have to build it. Designs them. Ah. See, yeah. So yeah. So whoever designs them, oh, interesting, is is a constructor. Now there is an addendum to that, and it does say that the obligation to design and use the listed parts shall not prevent a constructor a construct constructor from outsourcing the design and or manufacturer of any listed parts to a third party. In accordance with um, Appendix Six, and if we go back to Appendix Six, it basically says it, that in essence you can contract any part of the design of your car to anybody out there and still call yourself a constructor, just as long as that person who designs it or makes it is not in direct competition with you at the FIA Formula One Championship. So holy moly! So. Man. So that is why, and that's what that's what you were saying. You, you were talking about uh, has um, outsourcing the design uh, of, of the chassis to Dallara because Dallara doesn't compete in F1. They can do that. But I didn't actually see chassis in that list of parts that you just mentioned. That's true. Yeah. Well, the monocoque. The monocoque is a chassis. Are you sure? Yeah, the monocoque is a chassis. Isn't the chassis the support of yeah. the monocoque engine? Suspension components. No, no, and, that, and that's that's what that's what F one F one is different because the monocoque is the chassis, right? Like the monocoque is not attached to the chassis. All the parts are bolted, like as it were, onto the monocoque. Even the engine, in a way. It's interesting. Okay, I gotta look more into this because of what Haas said. We talked about this last week. Haas Haas was saying that entering Formula One. In its current form, as a constructor, was insanity. Yeah, it, he, was he, surely he meant Gene like surely he meant like uh, uh, making everything, including everything, the engine. Right. Yeah, and that's that's why I, I, it wasn't clear to me what's a full constructor. I guess like I, I had in my mind that a full constructor would be somebody like Ferrari, and I guess in essence they are. But even Ferrari buys parts like ECUs from McLaren. So, okay, I don't want to get too into this because yeah. I want to do oh. like a mini feature on Haas next week. But I don't know, Gene Haas owns i believe in the united states the biggest wind tunnel design factory and testing facility and you're gonna talk about that later or uh, or next next time we'll talk about this next week but yeah i don't believe that he's 
outsourcing all of those components. I believe just the chassis. But we'll talk about this next week. Absolutely. All right. This all right. is the Flat Out Fever F1 podcast. Uh, I'm Jay. Hoo-ah. Danny. And myself, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Our professional <laughs> producer. Yeah. And we're going to talk about and some uh, F1 F- stuff. F1 novice uh, introductee. Right? <laughs> ah, I'm Good learning. Man, yes. last podcast, I got to say, I learned a lot about uh, the tracks and I gained like. That a, was a fun podcast. Wasn't it? I that learned I learned so much about it. And yeah. like the next day, I remember telling my band, I was like, guys, I listened to the, like, I, I did this thing and I learned, I learned about F1 and it was really, really interesting. Like all the courses, all the tracks, how they've been changed over time. Yeah. Super entertaining. Listen to bamboo.com. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's shameless, the bamboo. Enough shameless plugs. Come on, guys. It's not shameless. <laughs> Here's something that we're going to do. Um, it's starting next week. Well, it's starting this week right now. And we're really excited about this because um, we, uh, we, we got a hold of... There's no other way to put this. Invitations to Racing For Me, Racing4.me. We have a total of five. Two, of, yeah, two that Five come actually days. even from one of the one of the admins at, at raising for me was uh, Enzo was, F1. Yeah, he was. For anyone who's familiar, he was definitely very supportive about this, and um, we, we'd like to thank those guys. Those guys are doing a phenomenal job. That's awesome. By the way, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, we have a total of five invitations uh, to the site, um, and uh, we're gonna start uh, to give them away beginning next week. We're gonna announce our first winner, and all you have to do. To win this first invitation is... Uh, Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Twitter. And Flat Out Fever. Yeah, we're at Flat Out Fever on Twitter. um, Hashtag FOF Podcast. Yeah, so hashtag hashtag FOF Podcast. And send us a drawing of your favorite track. A painting, a rendering. Whatever you want. That's so nice. Your favorite Formula One track. Yeah, your favorite past, present, or future. Past, present, or future. Whichever whichever one, just (laughs) send... Yeah, we're looking for tracks that have held Formula One races, or will hold, or will hold yeah. them. No fantasy tracks. <laughs> <laughs> no Rainbow Road. No, no, no Rainbow, Rainbow Road. Road. <laughs> God damn it, guys! Keep those in your head. It's a real track, or, though. Or, but, 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 I mean, I guess you could. Uh, overlay one. overlay a yeah, rainbow yeah, road yeah. on top of spa <laughs> if you want and that would be sick that would yeah. Be. <laughs> yeah. yeah well definitely we'll throw it up on the video podcast yeah definitely so yeah the first winner of this is going to be uh, um, next week and we're just going to keep doing something like that every week a different contest every week and um uh so yeah uh, hit yeah. us up on twitter and uh, yeah, tweet us at formula one or sorry, <laughs> <Not> flat <laughs> out fever. Hashtag F O F. The link podcast. is the link is over there somewhere on our on our on our Facebook page or on our on our YouTube wherever you can probably find a link below wherever this is you're seeing this. Yeah, don't don't be a Will Buxton. Yeah, don't be a Will Buxton. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't be a Will Buxton. Yeah, if anyone yeah. didn't see this. Speaking guy, of, okay, let's go. Let's yeah, go I, to him. I sent you that link uh, there. <laughs> Hold up, but Will Buxton uh, quit Twitter like a quitter. Here, yesterday. Here, look at this. Here, with a flurry of five tweets, that? he sent out in about three minutes. He quit Twitter. Yeah. I'll, I'll read them out quick. Uh, number one, you know what, guys? I've been thinking about this. And there's more to life than walking around with our noses in our phones. Probably somebody got mad at him. Oh, tweet, yeah. Tweet, he doesn't know how to deal with the trolls, right? Twitter <laughs> has its uses, our contest. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it also brings out the worst in me. The snarky, sarky, quick to judge fool. And honestly, I'm tired of it. I don't know. Tweet He's British. This is uh, one minute into his diet, his little. Uh, oh yeah, no, this is uh, this is look at this seven minutes, seven minute, nine minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, poor I'm, guy. <laughs> I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of summing up life in pithy 140 character message. Message, which, if we're being honest, matters not a jot. Tweet for. <laughs> so thank you all for following, but there's so much more to life than this, and I'm letting it all fly past me. Do you think he's five. drunk or high? Here endeth <laughs> the tweets. I don't know. Yeah. He works on television, so I'm sure this helps his career when he tweets out stuff on. Yeah, that's true, wouldn't it? Weekends and things. Yeah, yeah. T- TV people have to have Twitter these days. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, that's, that's Will, the main use for Twitter. <laughs> in our contest, Will Buxton is is like, he, he 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 was pretty cool. Invites. Um, he 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 used to uh, tweet a lot and like a lot of interesting stuff. Some less interesting than others, but uh, during the year, like he would he would uh, he would. Uh, post links to his blog and whatever um without those tweets i think i'm gonna be pretty much missing uh 
every single newsworthy thing that he has to say, which is bad because he organizes a pretty yeah. quick, a pretty cool get together in Montreal. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to somehow <laughs> you find out where he's uh, really? where he's hosting his Check thing. Check out his Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if he has Facebook. <laughs> um, but maybe not anymore. Maybe not. Anymore. But that's the, not. Will Boxton. We uh, Twitter will miss you. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think. So. <laughs> no, this this seems like a like he just was like done with trolls and just didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, probably. a lot of a lot of people Maybe. are just like I just turn off my phone, man. Like you don't have to tweet or you don't have to like read it exactly because right? you know there's a lot of there's obviously a lot of like trolls out there, right? Well, isn't like yeah. like it, there, there's like different layers of internet addiction that are now being like categorized as like disorders, oh, like, like real disorders. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. really? I mean, does that have to be categorized as a disorder, or just is just is that just a symptom of something else that's going mm -hmm. on in your life? Because the internet hasn't existed for that long. No, yeah. <laughs> not even like not even like the way that it is now. Right? Yeah, and just this idea of having a camera with you. Well, we were talking about this a bit last week about. Uh, Oh, I forget what, where the study came from, but there's basically the same idea that male, specifically male, excessive male <laughs> selfies <laughs> is a mental illness. Oh, really? And not with women? Uh, no, I think with women it is expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, excessive male face uh, selfies. Anyway. Face shots. I don't, I don't know. At the long and the short of this is short of this is uh, go on our Twitter, uh, find us, send us your picture. Uh, we'll Make give it pretty, you. We'll give you I want to see a rainbow road. Yeah, I do. Seriously, <laughs> I swear to God, if there's a rainbow road, we might have to give it to them. We, we <laughs> might. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the way that we're gonna choose the winner is we're gonna choose the winner. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> that, that's a good, that's a good, good thing to say. We're gonna yeah. probably narrow it down and have a little vote. Yeah. And uh, you'll find out next week. We'll just get like we'll just get drunk and figure it out. We're like I like this one. <laughs> Don't forget, anyways, we do have five invitations to give away between now and the start of the season, but in the next four or five weeks. All right, let's keep talking about F1 stuff, though. Yeah. Because um, there's the other stuff. Hold on. I'll be, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, go for it. You yeah. guys, I got you guys good. You guys are good. Yeah. We're good. Um, another stuff that I found uh, that, that, was, that, that was interesting so, um, in, in, in the FIA regulations that right. pretty early on in the sporting code, it does say that the... Um, let me read this. The distance yeah. of all races from the start signal referred to in article whatever to the checkered flag shall be equal to the least number of complete laps which exceed a distance of 305 kilometers, kilometers right. or 264 uh, for Monaco. Right. Right. So, but, but that's, that's the only exception that is made uh, very specific here. Um, I don't know. I, it. I don't. Uh, it's. It's not clear, obviously, uh, where the three or five kilometers. Um, yeah, there's got to be from. a historical reason for it, or or a commercial reason, like like we like we saw. I think that's a more recent modern thing, like going back to Canada, 2012, hmm. with the whole big rain thing, which I I, I really don't agree with it because that was, that's it's part of F1 history now. It's never happened before. Probably never happen again. There's yeah. no reason to really limit these races to two hours, especially with uh, the one race uh, Singapore Grand Prix cutting it close. Like it's, yeah, well that's, it's that that, that it's cuts into something design, else. That it that yeah exactly by it, design cuts it too close for that race. Yeah, but I, th I think that that stabs like like deep into one of the recent troubles that F1 is going through, um, and and it's that you you're tying yourself too much. To television, and and yeah. to television schedules, yeah. where now a lot of people are abandoning the uh, the television model altogether. But anyway, yeah, uh, going back to these uh, three or five kilometers, that just re reminded me of the time that we were talking. Uh, we said that hey, wouldn't it be awesome if they could uh, have a race at the Nurburgring, um, and then uh, um, and then race there for double points? Well, that race under current reg uh, regulations would only be fifteen laps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fifteen, That's, which yeah. is which will be retarded. Yeah, this is what the reason, like the where I, the modern tracks are about three point nine five five kilometers, whatever mm -hmm. it is, three point nine nine five, because you want for the people in attendance too. You you don't want the cars to only pass fifteen times <laughs> over a, over a two hour race, right? You want to see them go by 50, 60, 70 times. Yes and yes and no, but if you if you know if you know what yeah, you're getting into. If you know what you're getting into, 
um, yeah, you're right. then, 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 then that's all good. I'd say, yeah. you know what I mean? Like if I, 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 I believe that if they had a Grand Prix at the Nür- Nürburgring, including the, the Northern Loop, um, enough people will go. Enough people will go to make it commercially viable just because of the, it's the Nürburgring. And they will yeah. go fully expecting to see the cars every 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that, that's, that, that, that's getting too hypothetical. I think, I don't know, I th- we can look into this, but I think there's got to be probably more historical than commercial reason for that 305 kilometers. Yeah, maybe. We can look into this. There, maybe there's got to be an answer. Somebody knows. Yeah. Uh, Danny, I'm just going to do you a huge solid right yeah. now. Can you going to turn me up? Uh, no. One second. This is a little in impromptu. Uh, you keep on moving in front of your face, and you can't—you just can't see it. Oh. So we're gonna do. You can't see your. I want to—I want to see your face, man. Okay. There we go. Something like that, right? Okay. Is that better? Okay. Cool. There you go. See? Yeah, I don't know, man. Oh wait, you're not on. You're not on. Now you are. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I think. Yeah, I don't know that 305 kilometer thing. We talked about this, like outside the podcast before yeah i don't know i'm not sure it's fully uh-oh that's fine uh, it's, i don't know yeah anyway we we will investigate further on that to see where that came just, from just because of the that whole canada thing that before 2012 there was never a race that lasted for five hours four hours four four hours whatever it was it's yeah it's still a ridiculous thing yeah and it probably will never happen again. That was a, just a crazy freak storm. I don't know. Yeah. Another thing that I saw in, in, in the rules um, that I decided to go check out is I hate to bring it back up because uh, we've talked about it. And, and I said that I was pissed off at it uh, <laughs> during the last, last podcast. But it has to do with this, uh, with the power unit homologation. And, and, and the people, so people said that, oh, now there's the, the, this whole controversy because uh, now they're allowed to because of some regulation loophole that they found. Some regulation loophole. So, Ferrari's first victory of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ferrari, oh, for, for, did you know that Ferrari already won? A race? Oh no! Wait, no. This they had this loophole that they found. Political victory. I I, I found the loophole. I I, I I decided to pick up the the rule book and I was like, oh, will I be as clever as a you know Ferrari engineer and, and see if I can find the rule um, the, the loophole there? I would love it's, to hear. It's on the page. Wording of this. It's a page forty seven. That's a page forty seven of the sporting code. Oh, oh so yeah, of the sporting regulations. Um, this is at the beginning of appendix four. Uh, so it's well uh, towards the back of the whole package, um, and and all it says is, um, uh, it just it talks about the homologation, and then uh, subsection A says a power unit delivered to one of the uh, requirements for homologation is a power unit delivered to the FIA no later than 28 February 2014. That's it. So all all it is all the loophole that they found is just somebody at the FIA. <laughs> <laughs> didn't prove read their work um and and just uh instead of, so this this was clearly the same thing uh, they, they picked up the opened the word file and they didn't bother to check page 47 and one 2014 slipped by when they were just doing the copy paste but really that's all it was it was just somebody somebody had the fia copied and pasted the exact same thing from last year and just didn't bother but see that happened but, but but look at that so so that's the only loophole it just because it says 28 february 20, 2014 but if you look, for example, just a few pages later to Appendix 7, um, yeah, Appendix 7 uh, deals with entry fees. It says entry fees for the 2014 FIA Formula One World Championship. So technically, if they're going to say now that that previous one was a loophole, I mean, guys, why don't, you sh- why, don't you, why don't they try to show up and not pay any entry fees since, since the entry fees are not stated here? <laughs> because these are technically for 2014. Okay, this is in the sporting regulation. What page is that? Tell me quickly. 47. 47. Or 51, rather. Because I see at the bottom there, what is that date? 29 June 2014. Right. This was revised on December 3rd, 2014, which I have right here. Oh, yeah. Wait, I, I, I don't know. Okay, go, yeah, go to page 51. Let's see if they even like caught it then. I'm 100% sure they did now. <laughs> I haven't looked, but okay, here we are. One more page. What? No, it still says 2014. <laughs> okay, let's, okay, let's compare this because I have some numbers here. 
from some other research I did. I want to talk about these entry fees, actually. Yeah. Because Mercedes did so awesome last year that they've now broken the record for entry fees for Formula One. Mike, tr Mike try this. No, oh, let's see. No, try, try, <laughs> try this one. Is it good? Oh, is this the... Yeah, that one, the extra pillar. The penalty for Mercedes for placing first in the 2014 <laughs> <laughs> Formula One World Championship, $4.9 million. And that's the highest that's, that's this ever is been. The record. Yeah, I believe this is in all in US dollars. Yeah. Uh, Red Bull, second place, $2.6 Which actually, I believe, might be... The second record? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But what they paid was the flat the flat fee for twenty four. Like half a million. The flat fee for twenty fourteen was five hundred and eight thousand dollars, which has gone up to uh, five hundred sixteen Jesus. for this year. But on top of that, that's the flat fee. You must add that's just, that's just to take part of Formula One, boom, you gotta pay that. Pay pay up front a half a million to the FIA who don't really do nothing anymore. Right? Unless anyway. Unless you've competed in the previous year's championship. <laughs> in which case you will pay five thousand one hundred sixty one additional dollars per championship point earned. Unless you are the championship team, in which case you'll pay, pay more six thousand one hundred ninety four dollars per point. Which is uh, the case for Mercedes. In uh, 2013, Mercedes... It is a penalty. It is kind of like a penalty. Here, you won. <laughs> but, okay, Check out but your bail for winning. You want, you want to win again? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you do it right. <laughs> so Mercedes is paying $4.9 of a total for all teams. Full entry fees collected by the FIA for this year, $24 million. So they're paying about 20% uh, 20, 20 of that. But uh, in 2013, for placing second, they netted $87 million in prize money. Right. And this year, $102 million for placing first place. Yeah, so, that's, that, so that is but a small size of the pie that they got. Yeah. But they broke the record. And I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're going to dominate again. I think in, just in raw numbers and like raw stats, that that their their Mercedes last year that that the W five the W five or six, whatever it was, it was the 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 winningest car in F one history. Wow. Yeah. So it had it accumulated more points than any other car, accumulated more wins than any other car, more pole positions than any other car in the history of the sport. Good lord. Yeah. It was, it, but it was, but you know what? It didn't feel like a total like like flat out domination from the beginning well it it kind of i mean it kind of was but it wasn't like at one point they were still within grasp of you know the red bull or the williams here and there towards the end admittedly yeah well i don't know they ricardo won three races with the with the renault engine but uh all basically on occasions where mercedes had big mistakes yeah or or breakdowns or some sort of problem. Going back to the tokens, though, that, that I that I don't want to talk about, but I, I just feel like we must. Yeah, we have um, to. <laughs> <laughs> Last time out, we said something, or at least I assume something that is completely wrong. <laughs> so the, num the amount of tokens that um, McLaren Honda, or Honda, really, as an engine supplier, is going to get next year right. equals the amount of the, or uh, the average of unused tokens before the start of the year the average of the unused tokens right and this this is actually when when you when you actually examine it like that it's a very clever thing that the FIA had done and and I actually know this up and and this is actually like from uh, uh, listening to the formula one blog.com uh, they have a good podcast there I was listening to it and, and, and that's when I snapped out of it and I was like okay no never mind it's not it's not how I thought so it's so it, it's the unused tokens before the stand uh, the start of the year so before the first race what that is doing is essentially making the cars or, or the other engine suppliers now use as many tokens previous to the start of the year yeah. as they can if they're scared of, of, of Honda, so if there is a threat that Honda may gain any advantage or or have um, or have such a strong um, first season uh, from the get-go, then the teams are gonna want 
to cut that advantage as much as they can and, and play it safe, right? So the, the playing it safe move would be for teams to actually develop as much as possible, use as many of those tokens as possible before now, right. so that so that then um, uh, Honda will be like would, wouldn't have that many to play to play around with, um, and I think that's that, that is closer to to what the FIA wanted to do at the beginning, which is basically tell everybody, all right, show up at the at the at the, at the at February at the end of February, show up with your 2015 engine. And that's it. That's your engine. Let's race. Are you 100% sure that? Okay, is it the average remaining? Yeah, the average of the average of the unused unused points tokens tokens at the point of at all the start three of the engines being homologized or at the start of the no season? at the start of the season. So the Friday of Albert Park weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because Renault, Renault, I I know this. Yes, Renault went. Uh, on record yesterday and say that they've already used about two thirds of their token. That's what I'm saying, man. And they will start the 2015 season or on the 2015 engine. That's that's what I'm saying. So this, yeah, this, they, this, this, this whole stuff, I think Mercedes, a team like Mercedes would want to just, fuck it, let's use all of them. Let's start the 2015 from the get-go with as much advantage as we can. We already know. Like, it, didn't they already, uh, or didn't they say at the end of last year that even without doing anything or any any research, any extra research, they already had figured out how to extract another 60 horsepower from their engine without touching it? Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes did yeah. That, said that last year. So Mercedes probably have been working on this year's engine, on the 2015 engine, since homologation last year. In theory, with, you know, soft working on it. Now that they're allowed to, if they know already, like how can they, like how they can optimize their engine to the most? Why wouldn't you use all your thirty-two or whatever tokens, and that way, your your contribution to the average that Honda is gonna get is gonna be zero. I, I believe I don't. I I try, I try to find. I cannot find a source, but I think Mercedes said that they will be starting. The season, I think even Harris on the new engine might be the only team that's doing it. But they, no, didn't didn't they? Uh, yes. I think um, Williams is also going to show up with the with the, with the Mercedes twenty fifteen engine. Right. Yeah. So that would I would assume that means it has to be homologized because Mercedes supplying them with the engine. Yeah. Now now guess. But the thing is, yesterday w w Renault saying they they have used. They're saying that they have used. It could be sandbagging, of course. Yeah. Endless sandbagging. But uh, they said they've used two thirds of their tokens already, but they're predicting that Mercedes will not start the season on their 2015 engine. They said that will not. Renault said that yesterday. Yeah, um, who knows? May maybe, but I think they will. Some people say that that kind of makes sense. You know, maybe they can show up with their 2014 engine, and then and then yeah, as the season progresses, start adding uh, more bits as 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 they become. Uh, more aware of what the new year's regulations are going and things like that. But, but again, but, this 60 horsepower from Mercedes could be sandbagging. And yeah. this, also this dude, I forget the name now, but I didn't write it down, from Renault yesterday said their deficit at the final race of this year was about 60 horsepower to Mercedes engine. And uh, they're saying that they should be able to half that de deficit before the start of the season. This is Renault talking? Renault talking, yeah. yeah but they're this, French. Renault, saying, <laughs> Renault is saying that they will start with only about a 30 horsepower deficit to Mercedes. Are you Renault. sure they didn't measure that in cigarettes? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we started with a 30 cigarette deficit. While we're on the topic, quickly, uh, yeah. this is about a 20 second clip here. I sent you a link, Mr. Producer. Oh, yeah, one moment. Yeah, Ferrari started up. The brand new car, the brand new engine. Yesterday. What is it called? It has a silly name again. <laughs> the, the SF15T. SF15 SF15T. Let's 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 listen to this quickly because it's. Uh, uh, hold on. Can we are are we allowed to have this? Yeah, of course. It's a fucking engine noise. Oh, okay. Hold on. Press I, I that know, engine like, it, start it button. On, it depends on. Um, oh yeah. Depends on a few things. All right. Um. Yeah. Let's listen. Play it. Oh, 
Oh, and that's oh, the yeah. wind up. That's the wind up of the, of the, of the turbine. No, that, that was uh, that cur- sounds crazy. Courtesy, that sounds like a, courtesy like a of uh, this is F1 podcaster. Thanks for that. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a or it like a vacuum. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, it or like, like a dinosaur in the distance, you know, like you just kind of hear it. You're like, oh no! Yeah, it was just, I don't know. They had a shitty microphone. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. It's way cool. Too loud. I'm not sure. Cool? I don't, I don't know. know. You guys no. know better than I do. No, I mean, uh, cool. I would, I cool should be completely irrespective of whether you're a fan or not. Was that yeah. cool to you? Kind of, because yeah. it sounded like a dinosaur. <laughs> 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 that's just me. What a, what a Project Six 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 is alive. Yes, it's alive. <laughs> I guess they didn't ask their uh, ask the fans this this year to name the car. Yeah, that's because that's what they did last year. <laughs> it was the F fourteen T last year. Yeah. Okay, I, I just want to go through this quick because go for it. Ferrari is crazy. I, I know some teams have changed around the names of their chassis a little bit from year to year. Not for Cynthia, it's always VJ Malia. VJM, <laughs> the RBR, they're all yeah. the same. A lot of teams have all been the same. I, I believe. All the Lotuses, the low tie so far, mm-hmm. have been in order. From okay, let's start in 1997 because that's how far back I went, and it was getting too ridiculous. I just stopped there. In 19, 1997, they called the car the F310B, and then moved to the F300 for 98, and for 99, <laughs> the F399. I understand. What f- I don't actually I don't get the 310B where that comes from. The three is for the uh, the size of the engine. It was a three liter. The I don't know the 300 whatever. 399 I guess three liters 1999. Yeah, but Ferrari also called their uh, their 2004 car the F 2004. <laughs> and 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 um, well yeah from okay from 2000 they went with the F1 2000. But well, then from 2001 to 2005, it seemed like they had settled down. It was the F2001, F2002, F2003, F2004, F2005. Pretty boring. Yeah. Until 2006, where they went to the 248F1. Oh, they, they went back to the nuttiness. I don't know what the fuck that is. I, I know that for the 150th anniversary of uh, Italy being becoming a country... In the modern sense, 2011, they, they called it the F50, the, the F150, but no, uh, they, they, no, no, they wanted to call it the F150, but then Ford came up to them and was All like, right. "Oh, oh, excuse me, you cannot call it the, uh, the, the your, your car the the Ferrari F150 because we own the F150 trademark." And excuse me, uh, <laughs> you hillbilly American, nobody, <laughs> nobody in the right mind is gonna confuse. A, a, a bright red F1 car with your shitty pickup. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem at all. People are going to know which F150 is which. Yeah. <laughs> There's not going to be any confusion there. If anything, it makes your truck look better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, F150. <laughs> so they call it the, the F150 degrees. Yeah. The 150 degree Italia. Yeah. <laughs> that was 2011. But in 07, they realized, oh yeah, that... That old naming system from uh, 01 to 05 was pretty good. So they went with the F2007, F2008, and then they got really bored of that after two years. In 2009, it was called the F60, the F10 in 2010, 11. We just mentioned the 150 degree Italia. Yeah. 2012, they went back to the old convention again, F2012. Uh, In 2013, it was called the F138 for, I guess, Ferrari 2013 eight cylinder. <laughs> Last year they left it up to a Twitter and we ended up with the F4. Oh, no, yeah, they, they, they just took like an online survey. Yeah, there's a survey with like four options or oh. something, something like that. They were weird names. And then this year, brand new convention again, the Scuderia Ferrari 15 T. Scuderia. Scuderia. Ferrari. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the SF15 T. Yeah. They're ridiculous. It's crazy. You know, stop it. Just stop I, it. <laughs> Ferrari, settle down with the so names. Stop it. <laughs> Most of the road cars, the names are awesome. But no, except for La Ferrari. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it, then you essentially end up with the Ferrari, the Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, well, I, like, I, I like that. I, I like that. 
<laughs> but but no, yeah, a, a lot of the the road cars name are, are pretty good. Um, one thing that has also been bothering the press recently, actually, that uh, I don't know if we've talked about it yet, but I don't think, is that there's not gonna be a German Grand Prix next year. And that follows is that for sure. Yeah. So well, there's talk. There's talk. Bernie Ecclestone yeah. is throwing the message out that there might not be a German Grand Prix at all. We had said that they were not going to do it in the Nurburgring. That's what we talked about the last That's time. Right. Remember? Right. Like, uh, that looks cool. Right. Yeah. They, but they were going to do it in Hockenheim, which could have been cool too, but maybe not. But so now they're saying not at all. And this comes after weeks of people saying that. Um, F1 audiences in in Germany, both on television and um, attending live events, are in sharp decline, and and Germans don't like to go to F1 anymore, and and, and Germans, I don't know, they 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 don't care that that the, for, that that Mercedes is winning races. Upset that a British driver won in their Mercedes, maybe. No, oh, it's protest. That's protest. I uh, f- that's protest. I, you know what? I've, I, the one thing that I admire German people for is uh, th- th- their high level of uh, of common sense, and, <laughs> and, and, right. and I think German people, if, if can be described by one word, would be pragmatic. Um, <laughs> they, they, they 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 don't do things for no reason. Mm. It is my experience, um, and and I believe that this actually just reflects a more the common trend in many many other economies, and it's that. People might just be turning away from the TV altogether. I don't. I haven't had cable for a few years now. Yeah, I haven't. I'm on like eight, eight years, cable free. Where I haven't like really like sat down and like changing channels. Yeah, and it's not like anything's good on television either, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And the thing even when I did have TV is about actually it might maybe like a year ago, Mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything. Like oh, no. with, TV with, sucks. with commercials, and then I'm like, oh man, there's so much content I could be uh, exploring without commercials. Yeah, Has- for free. Yeah. Hashtag FOF podcast. Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, to the exactly. contest. Get your invitation. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, this is this is this is a more uh, global trend. I don't know what. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what to say about the um, the live audiences are racist because, I mean, that 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 could have also something to do with. Uh, um, you know, with the, with the engine noise or whatever. Who knows about that? Mm-hmm. But I can tell you right now that the declining TV audiences in Germany, um, it's just the same as declining TV audiences everywhere. In everywhere. N- not just for F1, just for everything. Uh, like the, 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 there are suitable alternatives that right now are actually better uh, <laughs> than mm-hmm. watching TV. And, yeah. and, and network television is, is definitely on the decline. And this is something that that they don't want to. And uh, F1 Fanatic, it's a, a great blog, um, just released an article uh, today. Yeah, you're um, just talking about this. Yeah, the, the fans worldwide reveal the cost of watching F1 in 2015, um, and th- there's some staggering reading, man, to be yeah, to be done. Then interesting like, chart. Oh yeah, and like it, it just says that Sky F1. So Sky F1 is probably one of my, one of my favorite. Um, F1 broadcasters, mm-hmm. uh, they, they they do their job pretty good, but if you you can only get it in Britain legally, <laughs> legally you can only get it in Britain in Britain, and um, over there it's uh, like the annual price is five hundred and sixty two pounds, so so that that approaches probably like nine hundred bucks, but that's only for standard definition. So how, if you if you wanted to, how dare you want it? <laughs> HD. Yeah, one Fuck HD. Seven hundred and sixty three. That's probably like pounds. Tw- yeah, British pounds. Pounds. Like that's oh, probably like twelve hundred, twelve hundred right now, or some somewhere near somewhere there. Close. It's, uh, so this is and this is ridiculous. Now now check this out. That that's nothing actually compared with Argentina, where Fox Sports Latin America is charging people for not even the full coverage 1500 euro 1500 euro a year yeah, that's to, 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 to watch f1 um and it's and and their f1 as, as an organization and it makes money mm-hmm. uh, and the whole thing uh from from tv revenue obviously like because TV ads no no well uh, no from from selling the tv rights TV uh, from rights, selling yeah. so there, there, there's right. one company that's the, the formula one management or the formula one group they own the commercial rights of the sport okay but their interpretation of commercial rights um has everything to do with tv and especially everything to do with network television um because okay. the people that are, that are running it are fucking old right. and and the things that worked 
in the 70s are not the same things that work today, but they don't really understand that. Yeah. So they, they are really, really, really hanging on to, 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 to television and their television rights and, 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 mm. and selling the rights off to television channels. The problem with doing that is that, and I, I will repeat this, Ad Nassim, you end up with countries... Uh, like the difference between here, the, the coverage here, and the coverage in the UK. Mm -hmm. The coverage in the UK is very good because in the UK, like they're still somehow charging what seven hundred pounds uh, and over seven hundred pounds for a subscription for a yearly subscription. It's also if, a sort of part of the culture. Like you're gonna see drivers on uh, breakfast television, right? In some of these right. European countries, where right, but over here, but is it is, is just it, getting a team off the ground? Yeah, exactly. But house. right now. What you can do, what you have the luxury of doing to, in today's day and age, is is making sure that the you can build world. you can build the demand mm -hmm. for something like that by just letting people access the content. If any, yeah. if everybody w w in the world could access good quality F1 content, it would just be that much easier um, to re to s recruit new fans and and eventually create a demand and create the market for it. Well, totally. If like uh, okay, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, boxing. Right, like old school sort of boxing, where yeah. like you had to buy a pay per view thing, and mm -hmm. then you got all your friends over and you watched right. the, you watched the big game. But imagine, like imagine, it w you could just stream it, and mm -hmm. the stream was free. Yeah. Right. And what? Because like I'm I'm sure there's some sort of downtime mm -hmm. with uh, F1 races. Like there are times where like it's okay to throw in an ad or like put ads in here. Because like it's a longer event, right? Or how long is a race? During the race, not really. Not, not, not oh, really, really during the race, but maybe like before and after. Before right. and after, definitely. I mean, but that's what you're paying for, <clears throat> basically, with the, like a channel like Sky F1, a service like that, mm -hmm. is you're paying for uninterrupted coverage. But not all countries offer uninterrupted coverage, and right. this is the thing. That's, that's they the only thing. offer uninterrupted coverage in the UK because the UK is a country that likes F1 already, and they're coming. Mm -hmm. It's a mature market for the sport. They know that that enough people are gonna are, are gonna are gonna buy into their plans and whatever. Right. But a market like Canada, where where not enough people watch it to make it like profitable to that degree, what we end up is with a subpar coverage that has commercials that doesn't start when the race starts sometimes. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, like, so, so, like yes, yeah, so I've, I've watched races on TSN where the first five minutes are missing um, because something else was going on, a, a tennis exactly. game or something. Oh. You know what I mean? And so so they, just, they just don't put F1 in that priority. So mm -hmm. the moment that you want to show anybody, like, hey, let's come and watch the F1 race, like, it, the coverage is that bad that you you're more more than likely to be turned away from the sport. Um, but even then, like even even then over here, if you look up in Canada, you still have to pay uh, for TSN apparently seven hundred and twenty bucks a month. Um, a month? Oh, sorry, so uh, a, a year. year. Yeah, seven hundred twenty bucks Jesus a year. Jesus Christ! It's, it's got to be because because you have to you have, have to a buy plan, a sports package yeah. or whatever right, with, right. with your cable okay. provider. Yeah, which is gonna cost you a lot of money, I guess. Obviously, yeah. we've talked about this before, like. Just between uh, amongst ourselves about F1 having a service, something like what the UFC does with their fight pass. But even that it's, is it's not bullshit. A, yeah, exactly. This, this is what we found out. It's not yeah. a, not oh, an really? advertisement, not an endorsement. What they what they advertise is something similar to Netflix. You pay like uh, nine bucks or ten bucks a month, right, for a service that gives you access to all past events. So you can go back in time and watch. Any event, stream. Oh my God! Live from your device. But you can't get like a live sort of you thing. You can. Okay. You're paying this ten bucks a month. We wanted to watch a pay per view, like you were just mentioning with the yeah. boxing. Same thing works right. with MMA now. It was, I think, fifty nine bucks or sixty nine if you wanted HD for like a two or three hour event. Oh my God! On top of the monthly fee, and then even the free events, like there's other events that are just on. Fox, they're just broadcast for free, like regular TV. Mm -hmm. They still want ten bucks for those or something like that. But it's so because it, it seems like I don't know. The model is too greedy. Yeah, if it's, they it's, wanted it's, to do this for F1, they're gonna be oh, but it, and and F1, bringing every dollar out of yeah, it. And yeah. no, and the thing is that F1 is or uh, the way that they built the model of F1 now is they've uh, essentially Bernie Eccleston has transferred that responsibility, the responsibility of, of, of offering an online streaming or, or of dealing with social media and all that stuff. It's, he's pushed back that responsibility 
to the broadcasters. He said, our team is not really going to get into that. Uh, we're here just for the broadcasters. We'll mm -hmm. deal with them. The broadcasters can deal with the, with the regular people. Um, yeah. that, is, uh, <laughs> that is just the most backwards thinking I've, I've ever experienced in my life. Mm. Um, and anyway... Yeah, because exactly. of that, that's why we're giving these invitations away. Oh, Can't say oh. it enough. <laughs> <laughs> I guess part of the. I guess so this with, with this, this thing that we're giving away is is that. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. The people know. Oh, yeah, they okay. know what it is. Yeah. Oh, they know what it is. Yeah. Oh okay. The people who, who want to know know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, what you're just saying, like this list here, is part of the problem. I guess mm -hmm. with putting together a service like like a fight pass is that there are so many broadcasters and the responsibility is yeah. on their shoulders and there's so much competition for sky to say we're going to invest in the back end to build servers but the thing is that they, if, so each broadcaster only has like the rights for like their country or their region so yeah. uh, broadcasters like what <laughs> yeah, this is the antiquated yeah it's just, it's laws yeah, it, it, it's 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 not gonna work that way in F one. Not until there is a revolution, right. a revelation, Ooh. revolution that February sixth no. might might get some answers finally. But this is this is what um, <laughs> Maurizio Arriva Bene. Yes, oh, I know. I love how you said I know, that. No, no, but <laughs> this guy, he's a he's a he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's he's a new Ferrari team chief basically. Okay, right. Uh, he he has an a his an history with Ferrari. I think he invented a new word here what arriva bene <laughs> oh, arriva, arriva bene so so Ma maurizio arriva bene the new team principal of ferrari has said that f1 doesn't need an evolution it needs a revolution oh my god <laughs> uh, but it, in 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 that <laughs> sense i mean if you because well, but now he's saying like no it, it, we we don't need to what to, to keep building these technologies we need to actually look at it all uh look at every single aspect and and change it and change everything change as much as we can so that it makes sense yeah. um, actually nikki lauda is another guy who's alongside arriva benny is so calling hard for this. Th these these older races calling. these guys that that are gonna are gonna have some some weight in f1 in the in, in the in the pushing things along and I'm, I'm glad that they're finally seeing it this way that the sport needs to change from the ground up and 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 hopefully it's going to be moving in that direction. So I, I I do applaud Maurizio for for coming up with that. Uh, let let the revolution begin. I'd he was, say he was actually responding to Lauda. He said, um, "Oh, Lauda was saying that like spectacular is a big word <coughs> because since everyone understands something from else from underneath, uh, Lauda said such a car should not lean on old times. The form must point to the future. Young and old have to say." cool so this this so what we have never seen before interesting and, uh, cool that was a direct quote that's why it was english was all fucked up i <laughs> 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 uh, said, said uh i share his view and need to spectacularize f1 and uh the risks highlighted already about losing fans are already a reality but obviously the, looking at uh this the german grand prix there yeah yeah and with uh this prestige or whatever with uh, next year the Grand Prix of Europe moving to Azerbaijan. Is that like, is that what they're gonna is that what they're gonna call? It? Yeah, gonna that be is the, the, the European Grand Prix, Grand Prix which is actually about a thousand kilometers east of Istanbul, maybe a little more. <laughs> it's basically it's oh, some, in some, Asia. Some people consider countries like Azerbaijan and and Georgia as as part of Europe somehow. I don't. I, I never really got it. But uh, many people also. <laughs> I think I think Istanbul, many more Istanbul is the dividing line. Yeah, the, yeah, the the Bosphorus the city that's on two continents. Yeah, the Bosphorus for sure. Um, but yeah, I guess February sixth, uh, we're gonna hopefully we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, but it looks like we're gonna finally maybe get some news about this revolution. Yeah, uh, th th this obviously has to do back with uh, the F1 strategy group, which is that group that we've been talking about, and they're they're going to be basically making all the new suggestions um, to the FIA of of what new things to bring to the sport. It's it's, mm. it's kind of they're they're tasked with that. This is um, what we've talked about January sixth and twenty first. They've already met, and now <coughs> the trifecta of Charlie Whiting, Bernie Ecclestone, and Jean Tot are expected February 6th to... Well, I guess Jean Todd, I think, has a nine-point plan. He 
wants to reveal. Yeah, Jean Todt is um, the the current president of the FIA. Oh, sorry, this is uh, Whiting. Whiting's with the nine point five. What, yeah, Whiting is the race, he's director. The race director. He's 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 a pretty like senior figure in the regulation parts of F one. Okay, like he actually like he's he's the guy that presses the button when each race starts. Like he's, he's, a, he's a pretty big deal, but but he's he's uh he, he's mostly on the regulation side, and then Bernie was the commercial uh, the commercial side. Yeah, Bernie is the one who's really pushing and started this whole. But, let's let's get a thousand horsepower back in Formula One. But okay. let, let, really let's look at that. The let's look at that group. So Jean Todt, who is Jean Todt? Who Jean Todt He's is the FIA president. The FIA president, but who was Jean Todt before? Jean Todt, remember, Jean Todt was he started off the, he was like a rally, no, race, no, he, rally he, race. More um, recently, navigator. Before he got that gig at the FIA, he was working. He was a team principal of Ferrari, Ferrari right. during their Michael Schumacher winning years. Um, and after that, after those uh, those years of Ferrari, he he left Ferrari. He, I don't think he was doing anything for a little bit, and then all of a sudden he like came back as president of the FIA. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure some backroom oh. dealing there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, but so 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 it's, so he's he's a politician though. Anyway, Mar yeah. yeah, he's he's, he's a okay. politician, a racing uh, politician, racing politician. We have the racing politician with with like the the sort of uh, the, with with the rules guy. And, right. and, and and the greedy commercial guy <laughs> coming together to, to, to come up with what? <laughs> so basically so, but e Echo Stone's three points are mm -hmm. simpler, stronger, and louder. That's his direction for the engines. With uh, there's a lot of suggestions from the manufacturers. And now uh, Whiting is expected to be announcing a nine point plan that he's been hinting at. Uh, basically focusing on getting the fans into it on the weekend, simplifying the rules, uh, aggressive looking cars, lowering costs, keeping the engines at a- This is way March? Oh, sorry, Martin, um, there's, uh, what's it called? Uh, well, Whiting's, Charlie Whiten? Yeah, this is, part of, well, this is the speculation on his plan, but- And what, what does he Todd also, have to he say? He also wants to introduce uh, 10 hour wind tunnel limits, um, uh, very much larger common parts list between teams that, um, to reduce costs. Yeah. Uh, common maximum for IT upgrades at four a year, uh, including also freight limits to races. Freight limits? Yep. Freight That's limits. getting ridiculous. It's all on reducing costs. Basically, all of his nine points are to reduce costs. They're, they're on the FIA side, they're, uh, basically all of these points are favoring the smaller teams. But... This is really about spectacularizing. You want to see bigger wings, fatter tires, lower cars, more aggressive. Um, <laughs> basically, Mercedes wants the same block. This is what they've more or less hinted at. They want to keep the same V6 block, mm. increase the flow rate, increase the RPM, increase... Uh, well, obviously, the amount of fuel. If they're going to uh, increase, increase the, the, the yeah. amount of fuel. Yeah. And... Uh, obviously, even right now, there's no limits on the turbo. They believe that'll get them to a thousand horsepower, keep the cost low. They've already developed these engines, and theirs is, uh, theirs is the best. They, they, <laughs> Got you. They, is they, the best there should now. be at least a thousand horsepower in, in an F1 car. Let's be honest. Honda, I mean, why not a thousand? Why not more than a thousand? Honda is willing to talk. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They basically just spend a shitload of money on a brand new block that they might only be using for two seasons. Um, their uh, their suggestion is to add four electric motors to the wheel hubs, which uh, smells like an NSX. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's the, where they got the idea from. The NSX has like uh, three motors, yeah, right? Three. Uh, as as per Top Gear yesterday <laughs> or the day before. <laughs> yeah, they have uh, one on the back part in the as part of the drivetrain and one on each of the front wheel hubs. Oh, cool. So that's what they want to do. Electric power. They've already worked on the controls for that, obviously. Um, Ferrari want to go back to the 2.2 liter V8 with a bi turbo and limiting the RPM at 17,000. That's what they've said. So I don't know. Honda might even have some old blocks <laughs> going way back. I don't know. They left in the V10 era, didn't, didn't they? Who? Honda? Honda. Uh, it was uh, maybe 2008, the last year that they were. So they were, they, they were in the V10s, I guess, yeah. The rumored price for these engines is. Rumored to be limited at 10 million euro per, which right now is about was it 25 point? No, I think I think I think I think that number was for the year. 
For the year? Yeah, for twenty five million or thirty five million a year. Really? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we're gonna find out in about a week and a half. Exactly. <laughs> I uh, really hope, like this is what I was saying last time, the belief is strong in me that we're gonna see some these aero update updates for next year. We're gonna see fat wings, fat tires. Oh, I hope so. And they, they better put the they better do it soon. Hinting at the the next year, thousand horsepower. Yeah, we're gonna see it. I have I, I don't really have a preference if they stick with the V six or the V eight or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, because this is this is what Lauda was saying that doesn't matter what's underneath. Yeah, people don't care. People people mostly don't care what's under the hood of an F1 car. Um, they, they they don't care at the races and they don't care on TV. It's 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 what the final product is. We <laughs> most you know that not a lot of people are like really like that much into the sport. Even even like some of the longer time fans, they're not that much into the sport to like go like and try to like find out you know like what the diameter of the wiring loom is like <laughs> yeah exactly. they, they, yeah no, no, nobody really is that into it um, of- and that is not that is not the point even i mean the if if, if, if one i mean you, you do have to understand already like going into f1 you understand that the cars are probably like the most advanced car uh, racing cars that there are on the that people on the, people understand that, but they don't need to understand how exactly is it that they are. Uh, they just they just know that it is, and they look so, they look amazing. They look like like rocket ships, some of them. Uh, and and you go to the track and you watch them race around, and there's great racing because the drivers are also some of the best drivers. Yeah. So and that yeah, that's, that's, where that's sim- all you need. Simpler rules come in. Yeah. And I don't, it, I don't I don't know honestly I couldn't think of a lot of places they could simplify the rules, but I don't know. There's a couple. Oh, dude, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean, though? <laughs> let me let me let me show you the rule book, and let me tell you, this could be at least a hundred pages shorter. A lot of that is measurement specifications, blah blah blah. Yeah, and and, and like weird politicking. Yeah. Hey, Ricardo is gonna make an appearance in Top Gear. Yes. And actually, if you if you're an if you're an uh, an F1 fan out fan out there, and you don't watch Top Gear, uh, you kind of should. I mean. You think he's gonna beat Vettel's time? Uh, I don't, yeah, <laughs> that could be great actually. If he beats Vettel, that would be awesome. <laughs> Who cares if he beats Hamilton? Because yeah. he fucking cried and went twice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do hope he beats Vettel. That would be amazing. Look at him. I don't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think he will. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's uh, this is the the episode coming out on February the eighth or something like that. Um, <laughs> that's what it's due. Yeah, I guess. Probably on his back, Renault is uh, expecting five wins this year. No, that, that's yeah. yeah, that's their that's their, wow. their minimum. That's their stated minimum. Yeah, but they won three on the back of Ricciardo last year, mm-hmm. on the back of Mercedes' mistakes. So yeah. obviously they're expecting Mercedes to fumble to either make more mistakes or yeah. Well, so Renault obviously had to change many things, and that's probably what they're why they're going to use all their tokens, no matter what. Yeah, um, everybody's using all their tokens. Who's not? <laughs> who's not using all their tokens? Mercedes might not. Mercedes uh, might just keep them. I don't know. I don't know if that would be any, of any benefit. Like that, that would just probably. No way. Nah, no. I think everybody's gonna use all their tokens, and and uh, poor uh, poor Honda is gonna be stuck with uh, the situation they arrived in. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They're gonna want to see what they everyone else is bringing to the track. There's no way they're gonna leave themselves the full season. With no points. No, no. tokens. <laughs> with no tokens. They're not using them all before the season starts. No, they're not. They use as many as they can safely. Two thirds is what? 20. They might have 10, 10 or 11 going into eight the season. Eight what, tokens. What, what, I think, what, who is it? Like Tobias Gruner was saying eight tokens? That was a prediction. Yeah. Who knows? Well, I don't know. He's German. Maybe he knows something we don't. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, what else has been going on? Um, do you have something to say about the the teams that are trying uh, that, are, that are testing at Jerez? Well, oh yeah. Well, I sort of touched on this before that um, I think I don't know. Renault is saying they will be there with their 2015 engine, and I'm pretty sure Mercedes said they will be there. Yeah, I think Mercedes and, and, said, Williams. and, and Williams. So, but so Renault got, is saying that. Mercedes will not. So who knows? Maybe not all of it. And this is this is this is what um, 
the possibility that I thought because I don't I don't think it's fully specified whether say from team to team Mercedes and Williams that they have the same uh, um, engine supplier which is Mercedes right. but you don't know if for example Mercedes uh, for for the Williams they're only going to use what 20 tokens and Mercedes is going to use 30 tokens because because who knows if that's open to that point yeah you know what I mean or or even Mercedes Mercedes themselves they might they might show up with two different engines for two different cars or 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 maybe can or, they do that or maybe Mercedes yeah I don't know but maybe Mercedes can say because because all they have to do is say how many tokens they've used but um, say the, the the engines that go to um, to force India have used thirty two tokens, but they're not the same tokens that uh, Williams uh, used. You know what I mean? I don't think it's gonna get that complicated. And I'm sure like it's gotta we'll, be specified. In yeah, there. it's 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 not though. <laughs> it, it's probably specified in some sort of technical like briefing that Charlie Whiting might talk to the teams and say, listen, this is. You know, this is the interpretation of the rules that we want you to follow, <laughs> so, so and and we'll wait to see what what, what that is for sure. But yeah, uh, testing starts um, starts this weekend. Really, it starts. Um, um, yeah, so there's going to be transmissions. Uh, Sky uh, F1 is going to be um, offering some uh, Ted's notes, notebooks. Ted notebooks. Yeah. yeah, for Sunday the first all the way through to Wednesday the 4th. And I think th those are going to be the, the days of testing. So every every day we're going to see some pictures um, of new cars running around with those uh, stupid sensors and whatever. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, the air rigs. Yeah, the, the, yeah, those air rigs. Uh, but we're going to get some, some to see some pictures of some cars of this year, and I bet last, too. Yeah, we saw a couple already. Yeah. Where we see Willi oh, we saw some computer pictures of William's car. And, and Lotus. Looks yeah, Lotus looks more or less the same, black and gold. But, but th this is a car, though, that if you if you remember correctly, the Lotus is a car that they've probably been working on since early last year, probably earlier than the other teams. I think Lotus was in a position where they where they were able to say this year is going to be we're going to we're going to scrap it scrap and it. and we're going to work on the car fully committed for 2015 they got the mercedes engine which was a right. their i would say that was their first victory <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see um and 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 now they have uh, uh they have the car now interestingly enough though i mean i guess they must have broken all connection that they had with renault to be able to do that because remember but but remember how, how that team for the longest time they were specifically associated with Renault. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it's big letters. Yeah, they they, they they definitely changed some of that. Uh, and um, but now I just I read that the Lotus is back on track to being profitable, so good for them. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think I think I, I'm excited about the Lotus. I think Lotus could be a genuine challenger next year, but we will see it during testing. Yeah, McLaren haven't released anything yet. They've sort of hinted they might be going back to the white and white and red livery. Who knows? There's also they, some they are rumor that there's. I'm pretty sure because I've seen a couple of rumors that they ditched the chrome, and that uh, Mercedes might pick up chrome from okay. silver. They've they've tip, they've been silver a couple for it, the past it, few years. That was, does look badass. Yeah. I think it's pretty likely McLaren will show up in white and red, but. They, uh, now, are they showing up with a 2015 spec car uh, for the testing? Uh, I I'm not sure. Hmm. At least a, Barce a Barcelona, most people will show up with their with their car in one way or another right red yeah yeah i think so red bull said today they're not ready right yeah they're the still latest. they're still working on building the car or something <laughs> is it the latest they've ever been jeez force india i think they were the first right yeah i think for force india we saw the, their car before anybody else but they even though we are just earlier heard the ferrari engine start up they will be, I believe, a harass with last year's car, or at least last year's engine. They're yeah, not, they're not showing up with the new engine. Uh, Sauber hasn't shown anything yet. There's some rumors they might be the only colorful team this year, showing up with uh, blue and yellow. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh right, yeah, the blue yellow livery. Right, blue I wonder and what that what that was, IKEA. The IKEA car of the Saubers. <laughs> Force India is basically black now. A little bit of chrome, orange on the wings, orange yeah. highlights. 
I don't know. I kind of liked it when they were colorful. Yeah. They should have stuck with that. India, they're known for being colorful. They yeah. Have stuck with the Indian colors. The new VJ Malia is not very colorful. No. <laughs> um, uh, what else do we got? Uh, I don't know. I think I think that's it for the for this time. Then oh, we can uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can we can wrap it up at this point and uh, say yeah. Hit us up on Twitter. Like we said, we're gonna uh, post the link somewhere. Um, at flat out fever. At, at flat out fever. Hashtag F O F. Start podcast. start sending us your drawings. Yeah. Uh, Rainbow Road. If I swear to God, if yeah. that's a thing, yeah. if it looks good, um, <laughs> I might have to consider it. That's where I'll put my vote. Yeah, um, stylize them. Fucking paint them. Render them. Do whatever. And, and again, uh, as as always, the music is all courtesy of Mike's band Bamboo. Uh, check him out at listen to bamboo dot com. Listen to bamboo dot com. All right, Mike, play us out. Let's get us out of here. I got it this time. Nice. <laughs> I figured it out. It, it took only four episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm.